Within the EU-funded project patrols, the Leibniz Research Institute for Environmental Medicine developed advanced in vitro models and testing strategies to study the effects of engineered nanomaterials in the intestine. Here I'd like to summarize our contributions to the project and give examples of our research outcomes. The project's goal is to deliver alternative methods for the safety assessment of nanomaterials. This includes the development of advanced in vitro systems and robust computational models. To study the effects of nanomaterials on the intestine, the IOF contributes both in vivo and in vitro data to the project. This gives us a great opportunity to perform in vitro in vivo comparisons, which then allow us to estimate how applicable and physiologically relevant an in vitro model is. But here I want to focus on our in vitro efforts, which are centered on model development for the intestine. The intestine is a highly complex organ with a large number of different cell types, for instance epithelial cells forming the gut wall, but also immune cells guarding this barrier. Large biochemical variations due to food components, digestive fluids, but also the microbiota make it even more challenging to mimic the organ in vitro. So we have developed a triple culture model that can mimic the intestine in healthy and inflamed state by combining three relevant cell types in a transwell system. CACO2 cells as enterocytes, the E12 clone of the HT29 MTX cell line as model for goblet cells, and macrophage-like THP1 cells. Transwell systems are of course not rocket science, but they are an easy model to be implemented in virtually every lab. They also make it easy to analyze a large number of endpoints. One culture gives us enough samples to investigate barrier integrity, cytotoxicity, cytokine release and DNA damage, as well as to analyze various genes of interest. At least half a filter is fixed and used for different stainings. For instance, for the general characterization of the model, to identify individual cell types, or in combination with semi-quantitative analysis, to investigate specific endpoints like cytotoxicity. But after all, our model is just one of many available. Intestinal models have become increasingly complex with flow, 3D scaffolds, stem cell applications and many more advancements. The ultimate goal seems to be the perfect representation of the intestinal environment, but we started to wonder, how much is actually needed and necessary? Is there, for instance, factors of the intestinal tract that are more important than others? Or is there factors that have a greater influence on the outcomes? To address these questions, we decided to systematically study the effects of two engineered nanomaterials in different intestinal models of increasing complexity. With this approach, we hope to get answers on how the complexity of the cell model affects the outcome and whether the exposure strategy is an important factor to consider in the future. In addition to our triple culture model, we used the epithelial transwell cultures without THP1 cells and undifferentiated monocultures of CACO2 and E12 cells. These models were then exposed to PVP-coated silver or titanium dioxide nanomaterials for either 24 hours or repeatedly over five days. The most commonly studied endpoint is cytotoxicity, which we measured by LDH release. In the monocultures, silver but not titanium dioxide induced significant cytotoxicity. This effect was absent in all transwell cultures, although we actually expected the ongoing inflammation to render the cells more vulnerable. But even the repeated exposure did not seem to negatively affect the cultures. The effects on DNA damage, here measured by alkaline comet assay, were stronger in the monocultures. Both nanomaterials induced DNA damage in both cell lines, but again, the impact was much more subtle in transwell cultures, where at the maximum trends could be observed. The extended inflammation, however, resulted in an increased background DNA damage, which surprisingly was reduced after the repeated exposure to titanium dioxide. We saw that the model complexity influences the magnitude of the adverse effect of a nanomaterial. As others before us, we found differentiated cultures to be much more robust. The impact of the exposure strategy remains unclear. Whereas it did not greatly affect the outcomes, the corresponding extended culture of the model significantly changed their basic characteristics. But after all, we have not even approached the important field of particle pretreatments, for instance to address the impact of digestion or microbial components on nanomaterial toxicity. This will be important to approach the overarching question on how the in vitro outcomes compare to in vivo effects. I hope you've enjoyed this little overview on our contributions to patrols. If you'd like more information on patrols and its outputs, please have a look at these links.
In case you were interested to know more about this project in particular, or our research at the IOF in general, you can contact me directly by following this QR code.